like once you got there, like once you got to OVW or Deep South, yeah. now you're in their world. Now it's, yeah. and I mean, I feel miserable. <laughs> Six months later, I was fired because <laughs> I wasn't prepared for it at all. I had the fundamentals down, but I was like, be a star? Well, what? But, but you got to be in the ring with The Undertaker. Yeah, that was super cool. And I feel like that was, it. that was like an Easter egg that people discovered like a decade later. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you had your, you know, recent, you know, this current run with yeah. WWE, people were like, oh, that's he's, the he's same the guy? lawyer guy, yeah. That's Muhammad Hassan's lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. How did that whole segment come together? It was similar, uh, being in the right place with Chaotic. Uh, they called up the promoter at the time, Jamie, and they said, hey, we need, uh, which is a weird suggestion from WB for what we need, but we need guys under six foot tall who <laughs> uh, look like they could be like fresh out of law school. Uh, so, and, and if they have like, an, they, I forget how they worded it, but because it was for Hassan and Davari, like they wanted you to have a certain like look. I forget sure. what their wording was for. So three of us get sent. It was me, this kid Matt Logan, and this this kid Chase. I'm I want to say maybe I'm like at that time six months older than Matt, younger than Chase. But we didn't have anyone who was like twenty, which is so weird now thinking about wrestling. But we didn't have anyone who was like twenty six, seven, eight, nine, you yeah. know, thirty. Uh, it was all kids, and we all went there. I borrowed my brother's suit because I didn't have one, and the three of us are in catering, and John Laurinaitis comes in, and he just like looks at us, and he's like, yeah, I think he's going to do, <laughs> and that was the end of that. And you're like, uh, okay. Uh, didn't know exactly what we were there for, and then all of a sudden, like it was the whirlwind of a day. Like Stephanie McMahon comes up to me next thing I know and takes me for a tour, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. So like an individual tour... This is the backstage. This is where we do this. This is that. And I remember, like, to this day, her just saying, it's just like the independence, just with like a lot more money behind it. And I was like, it's not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she was the nicest person ever. And I was like, this is crazy. And then finally, like, you know, I do the whole thing and stuff. And they were like, you know, you're going to read this, this script. And you have uh, a writer, Ed Okoski, who's still, like, to this day with the company, head writer. Uh, and they, they kind of let it slip to me later in the day as the day went on. They're like, this is super important. Like, uh, at that time they did something with Hassan. Uh, I forget what it was, but it was like, I, th I want to say something happened with terrorist attacks too. Yeah. And it like UPN was under crazy heat. Yeah. And they were it was like, the London bombing. Yeah. Yeah. They were, it, it was, we, it basically killed his character. Yes. He, yeah. he disappeared after this, yeah. but they were like, you have to do a apology for his actions last week and it has to come off sincere and real because we're actually apologizing to the network wow. on live TV because that's what they requested. And it was just bizarre because in my head at this point, I'm, I'm like with Jamie, the promoter, I'm like, why didn't they just hire like an actor? <laughs> <laughs> like, why didn't they hire somebody professional? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is so bizarre. And he's like, you know, but I was a promo guy. I've always been a promo guy. He's like, you, it's just like your penmanship promo. Just go do one of your penmanship promos. I'm like, thank God I have this like script. I can read it. And like, they were like, you're reading it. You don't have to memorize it. You're... So I was like, okay. And then dude, I did a, I did an in-ring rehearsal with Undertaker with Hunter and Steph and Vince and everybody watching me. But at what point did they tell you, oh, this, by the way, is with The Undertaker? I mean, it was likely when I read the script type of thing, <laughs> you know, because it, the, day, the day was insanity. Like, because you did the in-ring thing. Yeah. Then I had to go. I remember being outside Vince's office because th I passed that test, and now I had to go <laughs> read it for him in his office. Oh, my gosh. Uh, just us and you hear screaming and a door slam and I'm like, what the, Michael Hayes looks at me and he's like, what are you here for? And I, I tell him, he's like, you got no effing chance, kid. Ha ha ha, he walks away. I'm like, oh God. I walk into Vince's office and like, I'm super nervous. Vince is there, he's super polite. And then Hunter just walks out and he's making like muscle milk shakes. <laughs> and he's like, and I, I don't know why, but like the jock in me was just like, oh, this is just a couple of dudes who just worked out and Having a sh it just like eased me completely. Yeah, you know? yeah. So then I read the thing for Tate for uh, Vince. He took one word out because I didn't know how to pronounce it properly. <laughs> Put a different word in. It was it was one of those days where you're just like, what is happening? Like by the time I got in there with Taker and did it, like 
even that was surreal because I, I want to say he gives me a choke slam and then a tombstone. Yeah. But he gives me the choke slam. And we used to have this thing where we'd go for, we call them treats. We'd go every day after class. It was just to the 99. It was food. We'd say treats. And we'd always like say when we left each other, big, like, thank you, daddy. Bye, daddy. That was our thing. I'm not kidding you at all. He choke slams me. And he's picking me up. He goes, nice and easy, daddy. <laughs> and I was, even that moment, like I'm in his crotch about to take a tombstone, like laughing and smiling to myself. Like, this is just what we do. This is so weird, you know? Wow. It was, it was just, it was the weirdest. Like they, they let me keep the suit. They gave me a cool payday. It was nuts. Like nuts. It almost became my career. Like, yeah. Like it was a career break, but it almost became a massive break. Like I got a call the day after from, I think, Laurenitis, who was like, hey, they loved it. Uh, you're going to come back next week. You're going to be in a wheelchair with a neck brace. We're going to really push this thing. And I never heard back after that oh. phone call. And then Hassan lost at the pay per view and disappeared. Yeah. So, like, it, I think never it was Never to be seen again. Yeah. 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 It was like a legit heat that happened. But at the same time, like, that, I mean, that could have defined your career. 100%. And yeah. then, you know, the man who's sitting here in front of me right now would not exist with the career that you've had. Oh, yeah. It'd be totally different. Yeah. Totally. You'd be, you know, suit and tie guy. There's with hair. so many of those things that happen in your career like i often think like oh man if i didn't break my neck and had that new york match at take like that like there's so many times in your career you're like that would have changed the projection of going forward yeah but 